We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are back from the summer break because we we did not do any episodes (laughs) (laughs) at all because... Summer was wrapping up and nothing happened. And we were going to do some F101s, but then I came home from camp and life. I was transitioning from life, so... You were moving. I was moving. There were things that happened that were not on the summer 2024 bingo card. Um, But you know what, Catherine? This is the summer break that is intended. (laughs) I I hate the anxiety of not knowing shit and seats being up in the air all season long with news and it driving us crazy. But I love this nice, quiet summer break. I have to believe this was the intention when they made this schedule originally. I mean, clearly. I mean, we had, you know, we had the big news about Carlos going to Williams next year, which is like, that was really what we were waiting on. Right. But they gave it to us like the first day. Which the I first so day. Appreciate. I was like, now we can be in silence and enjoy summer. (laughs) Right, exactly. Had we not had that, it would have been a four-week countdown of when is Carlos going to make that announcement and why, like, this is driving me crazy, which fortunately we did not have. No, and yeah, because honestly, we would have pushed ourselves to do an episode or two a week of, like, the countdown to Carlos' seat and trying to figure it out and just, like, coming up with random shit because that's what he does to us. But I'm so glad he was a good little F1 driver and made his decision and they announced it before the summer break, like truly, truly started. Yeah, because then it's all the announcement of like, why did he go? What will this do for his career? Why didn't he go to Red Bull or Mercedes? And the answer is, I don't actually care because he's made his decision. Um, and obviously we have an entire episode about our thoughts on it, but I, I, also, I kind of everyone- wrap my head around it. Everyone and their mother sent me the memes of like people like, with photoshopped Williams stuff on and it's like me for 2025 now that Carlos is going to Williams and I'm like yes I'm ordering my Williams gear today well I actually I will say I took a little bit of advantage um at you know I was having a moment of I just need to spend some money because it's the end of the summer at camp and I and I saw that um Formula One had their summer break sale and coincidentally this is near me but I do have this guy which is one of the williams 2023 um shirts that i got on sale for like 12 dollars. so that was oh i love yeah so i got that i got another red bull hat i got a little mini uh, rb19 car that's over there um but i completely forgot about the sale and usually i'm really good with sales but i have also like spent all of my money and I've promised firstborn children and I've severed limbs to, you know, start my new life in America. So I probably don't need, you know, another F1 shirt gear. So. Just know for, for next year, and if you're listening to this and you want F1 merch on the cheap, you can get some, A, the F1 website and the F1 store have sales all year long, but they also have like absurd sales during the summer break because they want to get rid of all of their merch to get all the new merch coming in. Yep, yep. So that is definitely something to make note of for next year. Yeah. Well, I'm currently trying to furnish this empty apartment behind me. So you'll get there. I hardly have a home. Well not really. It's an apartment. It's not a home. But um for those of you who have followed my <laughs> stream journey from South America I've moved to Houston, so I now live in Texas again. Um, I have an apartment, which is exciting. We have reliable Wi-Fi, which is yes. even more exciting. <laughs> when I was setting it up, they were like, do you do a lot of like video conferencing? I'm like, yeah, I need so the much Wi-Fi, <laughs> please. Um, so yeah, hopefully next time we podcast, it's not so empty and sad and I get rid of all these boxes. Honestly, I was supposed to do it this morning. But um, then I had to drive to Houston this morning instead of last night because my dog is currently recovering from surgery and it was just not going to happen last night. Um, and so now my parents are going to yell at me when they come tomorrow. But That's fine. Such yeah, for, and for, for those of you who are listening who know me, I haven't unpacked completely from camp yet. So if you're surprised, don't be. So basically our life is in shambles, but here we are. <laughs> 
Just turn it out podcast for the, for the fans. Exactly. Let's talk about let's I mean there there hasn't really been a lot of news, but there have been kind of a couple things that are of notes, I guess, from it's from the summer burgers. break. <laughs> it it is nothing burgers, but I think like I picked kind of the most important of the nothing burgers. Um first of all, Mercedes have announced that Kimi Antonelli will make his F1 practice debut in Monza next which race. makes sense. Which makes sense. It's his home race, and it's also probably where they're going to announce that he will be Lewis Hamilton's replacement in that second Mercedes seat, which I still don't like. Just want to put that. I'm in there. so against this, and it makes me like lose respect for Toto. Like I get it of why he's like the cool, shiny new toy, but Toto knows better than this. Yeah, you don't I... throw a rookie in the Mercedes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, uh, honestly, it's like if you can't get Carlos, you might as well go with him because I think he's like the best available option because what Botas isn't going to go back there and Valtteri Botas is, I guess, re- negotiations for Botas's contract and his future at Sauber slash Audi have reset itself with Mattia Bonato taking over. So no. I so I'm so it, mad about how the rest of these seats are shaking out. I know the rest, so of the, the rest of the seats are gonna be like whatever's but the the whole point is is that like if Mercedes couldn't get Carlos and they couldn't get Ocon even, then they might as well take Antonelli because, you know, there there aren't a lot of other options. It's not a great option, in my opinion. I think that Antonelli is not ready for Formula One, but it's the option that we're going to have to live with. I want it to be Mick Schumacher so bad. I mean, there's still a chance that he will be on the grid because we still have a second seat at Alpine that we're waiting on. Um, I don't think he's going to get that second seat, but then there's also the chance. Do we care about the second Alpine seat? I mean, if Jack Duhan I don't know where my aggression is coming from tonight. I apologize, but um, I don't care. I mean, one cares about Alpine. What would you care about Alpine? And none forgot who was at Alpine. (laughs) Yeah. So, (sighs) anyways, honestly, I don't know, but. Silly season is still very much so up in the air. We shall see what that means for the rest of the seats as we go. But I think the next announcement that we are going to get will be Antonelli ahead of Monza. Yeah, I don't think we'll get a stake announcement for a really long time. I no, think probably not until the end of the season. End of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, it logically would make sense for Botas to stay, but depends on how much money Joe is going to fork over. I don't know. I yeah, don't want we'll to leave. But I know. I I mean I think that he is one it of makes the so much other sense for Carlos to go to Mercedes, for Botas to go to Williams, and for Joe to stay at stake. But why then, does no one listen to me? Because James got Carlos. James is like over the moon. I bet he had the best summer break. He's like, oh yeah, living the James dream. Knows, Carlos is driving for Mercedes next year. Williams. Except it would sound completely different because he's very British. Very British, And and he's very, very James. It's, yes, um, Carlos will be driving for us next year. Cheerio. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I can't do a British accent. So, so yeah. So, honestly, we'll see. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, it'll take a while. Speaking of seats, Liam Lawson is going to be a Red Bull seat driver of some kind in 2025. Yes, somewhere. This is so vague. I hate it. And I feel like this is just promising something you can't promise. It's basically saying, Checo's out, lost it. Like, we and hope. Oh, please, get Checo off the grid. Um, but it's like saying Checo's gone. And Liam is taking his spot or Danny's and Danny moves up. Right. So, or so, he's taking Yuki because Yuki's leading for Aston Martin. Well, Yuki's not going because Aston Martin doesn't have a seat right now. But the thing but about Lawson. Eh, well. Um, that's in two Lawson, years, I guess. Yeah, that's in two years. So Lawson, in, as part of his contract with the Red Bull family of, of, of networks, his contract says that he has to have a drive on the F1 grid in 2025. As we know right now, there are um, there is one available seat technically because Max Verstappen is staying. Checo Perez has a two-year to your contract that we finished i know i know um yuki has extended his contract and that leaves the seat that is currently being occupied by daniel at rb no this is what it is Catherine. <laughs> i mean Chuckle i know what it falls is falls to appendicitis and liam needs yeah. to drive and then they're I, like oh look problem. we gave you a seat for one race and 
No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a, a full season. But no, my, what I think, and there are, there are a lot of rumors about why Perez is still at Red Bull, and a lot of it is financial. I won't get into the details on some of the stuff that I've heard because I don't want to entertain some of the nonsense, especially the stuff that I sent you the other day, which I know is very vague, but just look it up. But the... Um, but I, I do believe it, especially if Perez hands the constructor's title to McLaren, they will shred the two-year contract that Perez did sign, that extension, and either move Daniel to Red Bull and put Liam at RB or put Liam at Red Bull with Max. Yeah, I mean, I know Checo's staying because of the money, but like this is where it doesn't make sense to me because he's a completely average driver right now. In the past, if he's been that. great. If that, he's average. And looking at it in black and white, you can't tell me that Checo and his Mexico business backing brings more money to the grid than Joe Guan Yu and his China money backing. It's probably about the same. There's Joe's pulling so much money out of China, though. I mean, he, he's a much about, bigger country, but, but allegedly his money. sponsorship stake right now is, is worth about 30 million, 30, 35 million dollars. I would not be surprised if Sheko was bringing it that much or more to Red Bull. With all of his horrible Instagram posts. <laughs> you, I Emily just can't wait for, Red, for Red Bull PR so to much. take over his Instagram again. Although I love the awkward, like side smile, like. So Back, to <laughs> Back to work. Back to work. God, yeah. I just, I don't, I, I mean, maybe you're right. I just don't see it. I really don't. I mean, I, I just, I just, don't I see. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, logically, there's more money in China than there is in Mexico. Well, yes, but the, the amount of money being allocated to two F1 drivers, one, one is a lot more proven than the other, because obviously one of the issues sure. with Shou Guan Yu is the fact that he has never been in a good car at all, and Perez is a race winner who finished P2 in the championship last year, and that does bring in a lot of money, and he has a lot of backing from Fair. some big heavy hitters in Mexico. Fair. But I also could see Joe getting more money to get a better seat. Yeah, but th- where's he gonna go? I know, I know. I honestly think Joe is. I think Joe is screwed, and I think that Perez will be off the grid next year because, especially if Perez hands McLaren the constructors' championship. God, um, I want McLaren to win so bad. I mean, they're they're Not on their because, way. Like, I don't like Red Bull, but just because like I love like the zero to hero aspect of it like where they started 2023 the first race with like 27 pit pit stops stops. (laughs) oh and Lando got his first win I just I it's a I like it and Oscar is just so lovely and I love his mom so yeah we love us some Nicole I'm still waiting on that ground tramp stamp but Zach just continues to disappoint so Clearly. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I just, I don't see Perez staying at Red Bull, but then again, I didn't see Perez staying at Red Bull into the summer break and Red Bull proved all of us wrong. And I think that they did so to the detriment of their chances, but you know, we'll, we'll see. And then another quick note about Red Bull is that sporting director, Jonathan Wheatley did announce that he will be leaving at the end of the season. He is going to be the team principal at Audi. He and Mattia Bonato are basically going to be top two guys there. There will be a period of guard gardening leave in 2025 before he does move on um and the rumors from what i've been hearing at red bull are they're excited because they'll be able to hire more people with the one salary that they were giving to Wheatley for so long because Wheatley is very very expensive right audi is shelling out yeah i yeah if they can bring a good product, I think they'll be successful. But I just don't know with the with the car. So the the question is is, is are they going to have a good car? And right Ugh. now, we don't know. And obviously, the Audi car is not going to be anything related to what we're seeing out of stake right now. Wait, will Audi hand Hulkenberg his first podium? I hope so. <laughs> I kind of just want the record to keep going, so he'll always be in the history books. It's it, it it is one of the longer records, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, well, I don't think there's anything else exciting that happened since the last I mean, time there, we talked. There wasn't anything exciting at all, um, and, and anything exciting that did happen to us was not Formula One related. So, this is so adjacent F one related, 
but Victoria Beckham got her own docuseries on Netflix, and I'm just really excited because I'm hoping that Jerry's on it. <laughs> For those who don't know, Jerry's married to Christian Horner. There's the F1 tie. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I just, I really like when she talks and does stuff. Because I, I don't know if it was a documentary or if it was actually um, like the summer break episode of one of the Drive to Survive seasons when she was talking. But I just enjoy her as an individual. So, yeah, I agree. Anyway, let's move on to the Dutch Getting Grand back Prix. On track. Back on track. <laughs> let's talk about the Dutch Grand Prix. It's Max's home race. Is Zanvoort? We love Zanvoort. This is going to be. I I love this Strictly race. I love to this call track. it Zanvoort. <laughs> Zanvoort. Yeah, I, I I never refer to this as the Dutch Grand Prix. It's just always we're going to Zanvoort. We're biking to Zanvoort. Biking in Zanvoort. I don't know how to ride a bike. Really? Nope. Never learned. I can't um, jump rope. If that makes you feel better. So fascinating. Yeah. Fun facts. The more you know. <laughs> the more you know. There's there's your fun facts for the episode because Your I did not remember. Queens here. I did not remember to do enough one fun fact. So that is our uh, fun facts uh, portion of the episode. Check. Oh, we should just have like a random fun fact. And then also we can do Emily's random fun fact and Catherine's like actual F1 fun fact. Maybe. Yeah. There we go. Um, for FP1 appearances, obviously we mentioned that Antonelli will be in FP1 in Monza. This week in Zandvoort, we will have um, Ferrari reserve driver Robert Schwartzman. He will be driving for Valtteri Botas um, at stake because um, they all kind of just share. And there, there's only so many rookie drivers. Schwartzman has done this before. He um, he has driven in practices for Ferrari in 2022 and 2023. So this won't be the first time that he's ever been in an F1 car. This will be the first time that he's in a not great F1 car love um also what i'm looking forward to is the weather yeah so it's gonna be super super windy in fp1 but then the rest of it is just potentially like rainy except for sunday so we're gonna get rain friday saturday sunday should be dry but that always throws a kink into qualifying yeah which i didn't consider in my predictions <laughs> yeah because that's that's the other thing to remember and, and teams will do this where they will kind of sacrifice their qualifying pace most notably mclaren did this a couple of races ago where yeah. they sacrificed their qualifying pace to make sure that they had the setup for sunday because they knew sunday was going to be dry um and they they tailored the car to that so that is definitely going to be something that we're going to be seeing this weekend as well layman break they do that because what your setup is on Saturday has to be your setup on Sunday. You go into Park Ferme, you can't change anything on the car. Right. So that's why teams will sometimes do that. Like McC- like Catherine said with McLaren, they set it up how they wanted it on dry on Sunday. And then qualifying was qualifying. Yes, exactly. So we shall see what that means. But I, yeah, the weather this weekend is definitely going to make things interesting. Um, and I am very curious to see how teams handle it, especially how teams are going to come out of the gate after not having raced for a few weeks. Yeah. It's always interesting to see if someone's like a little rusty or a little tired after, you know, taking their yacht out in the med for two weeks with their like picture perfect families. Yeah. So. Who had too much fun on their summer breaks and who. Didn't I don't know. I saw Charles dancing in the club, so what? Can Either he's really a call that dancer, dancing? or he had he was overserved. I don't know. I'm not I gonna think judge. The answer cause... is yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> love. And then a bunch of them went to the Olympics. Yes, George Russell is rocking his like winter garb in summer. Classic George move. If you haven't seen it on an I implore you to go find it on Instagram. I think ESPN F1 posted it. George is in a full like turtleneck sweater with like a long overcoat winter coat with like pants on and it's summer. Well, so. no, I mean, it is it is summer where we live. Obviously where we live, it is like a hundred thousand degrees. Um, but apparently in Zanvoort, it is Thanks to the wind, it is. He was is, dressed for like twenty five degrees. Well, no, I know that, but I uh, technically not Celsius. Technically, the weather is in the like low sixties no. in in Zandvoort. Yes, I, I I looked this up when I when I was doing the he's, the. he's from England. He grew up in cold, sad, dreary weather. Like I don't know. He, this should be his, you know, average summer day. Yeah, but you know, he he no decided to you know be in 
wool and cashmere. So we'll see. Um, Anyways, yeah. going back to things that actually, honestly, but it was fashionable. I will give him that. And that's this little caveat. It was fashionable and he has not been bringing any fashion. So I appreciate it. He also I think that a lot of drivers have been, have been decently fashionable um, this weekend. Yeah. And, and not on the grid as well. I've seen a lot of like good looks like at the Olympics at whatever events they've been attending because I follow all of them the thing is you have to follow their girlfriends because then they post the good pictures if you follow them it's all just their PR yeah there you go the more you know things to note things to note something else to note is that Max Verstappen is going for a four-peat at his home race he is the only Dutch Grand Prix winner since the track was added back to the calendar in 2021 which is exciting yeah I may or may not have picked him to win. <laughs> just we also, well, on, why don't we just dive into our predictions? Facts, based on the facts. But also, I do want to just look back one hot second because last year, if oh, I yeah. this was the podium, you would die and say I was lying. Max Verstappen won, obviously. Fernando Alonso got P2, and Pierre Gasly ended up in P3. So definitely a different year this year. Like, very yeah. much so a different year. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that podium. And I, I, I don't think, like, no, nope. I don't even know where we're going to see the Alpines. I mean, Aston Martin has been struggling. Aston Martin is really talking about, like, we're just focused on 2025 here, guys. Um, and it's like, what we're can you say? New regulations this- soon. <laughs> <laughs> new regulations in two years. So pray for us. We're also looking for a livery designer. If you know any, <laughs> if you know anyone. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, both Aston Martin and Alpine have been um, not meeting expectations. They've been and... anonymous and very disappointing. Yeah, Aston Martin has been very disappointed, and uh, Alpine just has been. Alpine. Alpine. And we, we are shocked whenever they have points. And we also yeah. forget that Pierre Gasly exists, like, all of the time. Yeah, we do. Okay, with that, let's get into our predictions. So this year, Catherine and I are keeping track of our predictions. Last year, we did not, and we really shot for the moon on some of these. But this year, we're giving ourselves points for each one that we get right. And we start off with pole. So, Catherine, who do you have as your pole sitter for the Dutch Grand Prix? That's a great question. I don't remember what I put, and we only did these like a half an hour ago. I picked, what did I pick? I picked Oscar uh, for pole. Okay. Love that. Love that. Um, so I just have like Max killing it all weekend because it's his home Grand Prix and he okay. like, you know, has not won every single race this season. And I think he's really going to kick it into high gear. So I have Max at pole and Can then I? floating into podium. I have Max Lando Oscar. All right. I have something similar and I, I, I did, changed up my my podium when I said that I was going to do an old mainstay. Not doing an old mainstay. I picked for my podium, I picked Max also, and then I picked Oscar and then Carlos because, you know, hoping Ferrari doesn't continue doing what they're doing. So here's the thing. Emily's conspiracy tinfoil theory. Hat. Tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Carlos is going to tank Ferrari's chances of getting P2 in the constructors now that he has a seat at Williams. He's like all in about Williams, doesn't care about Ferrari. And I think he's just going to throw Ferrari for a loop and drive them into a deep hole. I mean, they're driving themselves into a deep hole, to be fair. Um, well, no, I guess mean, been... like, he's going to take his strategist but... hat off and he's not going to provide them with strategy <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. Yeah, I uh, – that wouldn't surprise me because, like, that plus, like, they have not been doing well at all since – honestly, since Monaco. But I, I do think that they are still going to take some time to resolve whatever these issues are that they have with the bouncing, which we used to call porpoising, but we're not allowed to call porpoising anymore because we hate that word, I guess. But the quote unquote bouncing issues that Ferrari has been dealing with since that last upgrade or since that that post Monaco upgrade has has really been screwing with them. And I don't know if they've been able to resolve that. But if they have, hopefully it goes in Carlos's favor. <sighs> I don't know. We'll see. I've lost yeah. all faith in Ferrari. Well, so. we know that. Fair weather fan over here. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so for our last prediction, we pick P10. P10 is the last spot where you, or last position where you get points. You get one point for P10. We give ourselves three because it is very difficult, as our track record has shown. So, Catherine, who is your P10? I actually think when I went with a little bit of a bold choice here, I'm going with Botas, and I'm going with Botas, which means also that Steak would get its first points <laughs> of the season. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. that's mean, but um, I know. Maybe I'll be ever in Botas's favor. <laughs> we we can only hope. You realize I mean, that he hasn't finished more than like P15 all season. I mean, I think he's finished a little higher than that, but not that much higher. Okay, I'll I'm give gonna you P13. <laughs> I'm gonna look. Yeah, please look because this is just gonna bother me. While you're looking, so I also made a little bit of a bold choice here. Yes, um, I have Charles getting P10. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it's not far off. You're laughing because I might be right. You're not. No, you're not. Um, uh, two. Okay, Botas has um his best finish is P13. Okay, split the difference. Whatever. Yeah, close enough. Um, it's still. It, I, I think that these are bold choices for the both of us, and I will be very entertained to see who actually gets P10. See, the P10 is where you can kind of have a little wiggle room for boldness, because you never know if something's going to happen. Strategy goes wrong. Qualifying is brutal. You get a 65-place grid penalty. You never know what they're going to yeah. throw at you. Exactly. So, anyways. Okay, so then just for funsies, we do kind of the biggest surprise, then who's going to do a dumb, which we try to not repeat ourselves week after week, although it's very hard. So, Catherine, yeah. who is your biggest surprise of the weekend? Uh, my biggest surprise is that um, RB is going to come out firing on all cylinders, and we're going to get double points for our friends at B Carb. I said that Danny was going to have a really good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of the same, yeah. but... Um, I think after the summer break, like, he was pretty quiet on social media. I think he's, like, really gearing up for it. I think he's going to drive for his life. And I'm pretty sure him and Christian had a conversation before summer break of, like, hey, really drive good because if Carlos is sucking, we're going to switch you. Uh, Checo. Yeah, that's what I meant. What did yeah. I say? Carlos? Carlos, yeah. I, we were just going on a rant about Carlos. I meant Checo. Yeah. So I think he's, like, really fine-tuning. Yeah, well, I mean, he's on. he's definitely driving for, for his life and driving to, to stay on the Formula One grid. And I think that the chances are they get better and better every race where Perez just does worse and worse, which going into my doing a dumb, everybody seems so optimistic that he's going to like bounce back from whatever his nonsense has been and like be the driver that we expect him to be. And I'm sitting here with my dumb is that Perez is going to start off on the same foot that he has uh, the last few races and is going to disappoint from a Red Bull standpoint. Can we define disappoint from a Red Bull standpoint? Um, he's either going to be like... I'd say lower than P2. <laughs> I mean, yes, but I'm going to say somewhere like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say like P8 and below. Okay, that's fair. Sorry, can you tell the auditor and me? What's uh, your... <laughs> What is for investigation? What is the what, what metrics are we using? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, so I kind of talked about this earlier, but I have that Ferrari is going to mess up their setup and strategy. So messing up Saturday with trying to qualify well, and then they're just screwed on Sunday, and then they're going to like try and throw a Hail Mary for themselves, and it's just going to blow up, and Charles is only going to end up in P10. Okay. So, I mean... Let's be real. This is Ferrari. That's reasonable. Right. I'm not. It's this is completely realistic. Yeah. Something else that is exciting for Zanfort is we have the F1 Academy. So they are back again. Um, it feels like it's been forever since we've talked about it, since they've been on the grid. They only have seven, eight, seven races. Hopeful for eight. Love an even number. Uh, seven races a year. So this is their... Fourth, so it's so it's seven race weekends, but they have two um, right, races that's each what I meant. weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this will actually be their midpoint. Race one will be their seventh race, so seven of fourteen. So they are, this this will be the official midpoint of their fourteen race season uh, going into Zandvoort or, or during Zandvoort. We haven't seen them since Barcelona, since Spain. Um, so it's it's definitely been a minute, and you know that we are always impatient for more um, F1 Academy content. I've been like 
following them a little bit throughout the summer break and since their last race. And, you know, all of the drivers are still racing in other series. We had a lot of them that were in like British F4. So they, they've they been doing, they're not just, you know, sitting and, you know, hanging out in the in the simulators. They are they are actually doing like other racing. Um, but it's, it's going to be really interesting to see um, how things go down the stretch, especially since Abby Pulling is way ahead in the uh, driver's championship right now. She's the Alpine driver. She's the best performing Alpine driver in F1 and F1 Academy right now. Um, and then she is ahead of uh, Dorian Pond at Mercedes and Chloe Chambers from Haas. She's the best performing Haas driver. Pond and Haas have 81 points each, but uh, Pond has a better aggregate finish, which is why she's in P2. But it's going to be really exciting. And then on a constructors championship side road and motorsport compost racing and prima racing are all fighting in the top three those margins are super narrow so who knows who will be up top you know once we get through this weekend because it could be completely different yeah and then something cool that the f1 academy does is they have a wild card spot for each race so that's generally someone who's local from that country of the host who's hosting the race so Catherine, who is the the wild card entry and what car are they driving? Because normally they drive like a different car. So what car are they driving this weekend? Yeah. So first I'll get into the car because um, originally the wild car drivers were just in a generic livery car, but F1 Academy just announced this week that they have team up, teamed up with this organization called the Female Quotient, which works to advance gender equality and equity in the workplace. So Susie Wolf is as always killing it with these partnerships um, and bringing in more female focused and female um, founded organizations into motorsport. And they will be providing the wild card livery for the driver. Nina Gadaman, who is um, a Dutch driver. She's currently driving in British F4. This is, I believe, her first season in single-seater open-wheel racing, but she has been driving um, alongside a bunch of the other F1 Academy drivers over these last couple of weeks. These lower series are, are like non-series. You can kind of like go in and go out. So like not everyone has driven in every race. But it's there have been significant amount of female drivers in British F4 this year, including a bunch of F1 Academy drivers. So we're seeing a lot more of these drivers getting into single seater. And it'll be interesting to see how this driver does going into this weekend. Super exciting. Maybe we'll see her in F1 Academy in a few years. Very yeah. much could. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, actually, she's on the older side because um, mm. F1 Academy does have an age limit. Gadman is 20. So that not she's not too old in comparison, but she is on the, the older side because these side, F1 yeah. Academy drivers are like 16, 17 years old. Like Leah Block, yeah. who's the Williams driver from the United States, she's like 17. That's insane. Yeah. Wild to me. Wild. Absolutely wild. Well, I'm very excited for this weekend. Very excited for Zanvoort. Can't wait to say Zanvoort a few more times in our recap episode. Um, I'm excited that the summer break's over. It honestly was really nice. I feel like we had such a hectic first half of the season with like Lewis, <laughs> period. Yeah. And then Carlos and all the seats. And now that's kind of quieting down. So it's kind of nice to, you know, actually take a break. But I'm very excited to get back to racing. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I don't think with the way my summer ended, I would have had the capacity to also think about Formula One. <laughs> Me neither. Um, so like the end of camp and coming back to Arizona and, you know, adjusting to the fact that now I live in 100,000 degree temperatures um, and everything um, over here, it's just like, I I needed the summer break just as much as Formula One did. Um, but you I work just as hard as they do. <laughs> Oh, totally. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm really excited for Formula One to be back. I'm excited to wait. Shockingly, I'm excited to wake up at 6 a.m. or before 6 a.m. to watch a Formula One race, and also to watch Formula One race on my couch with my big television instead of watching on my iPad or on my computer like I had all summer long. So it'll be really nice to like be at home and not have to worry about like watching the end of the race while also trying to run breakfast um and all of the things that i would have to do just based on how timing worked with races at while also running a summer camp so it'll be nice to just like not have to worry about things and you know still be in my pajamas just lying on the couch and then you know take a nap after the race is over i'm getting a depression because i just remembered i have to wake up early again you do i'm sorry Ugh. One th one of the things I'll really miss about Argentina is the good F one times, but yeah, the times okay. were much better. But your t your times are still better in Houston than they are where I live. They still are better than yours forever and always. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyway, so up next we will have our Dutch Grand Prix uh, 
recap episode out on Monday. Follow us on socials all weekend. We will keep you entertained, as always. <laughs> but that is it for our Dutch Grand Prix predictions episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>